to rise and if you wish you can open your hymnals in front of you to number 526.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Gary Runke. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Would you join me as I pray? Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all of those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we praise you for Gary, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear now a chosen reading from Romans 8, 1 to 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Friends, hear now words from Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Family and friends gathered here today, we remember Gary. We're here to celebrate his life by sharing memories of time spent in his company, 
I see caregivers here. I see friends. There's a big crowd, a lot of, a lot of different circles that he touched. And I know that you all have fond memories. And you've all been brought together by the, the bond of friendship, the bond of the love of horses, or have grown in community with Gary. However you knew him, he undoubtedly touched your life. I know there are many fond memories in the hearts and minds of all of you here today. The family wishes for us now to share memories and bring comfort to each other. To begin, I would like to call Gary's brother David up to share with us. And if others have some memories you would like to share, feel free to come up after. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> thank you everyone for coming today. <clears throat> I got a bit of a frog as you can hear, but uh, hopefully we can get through that okay. In the uh, folder there was a, what's called the Cowboy's Prayer. And when I was looking at that, the one thing that stood out particularly about all else was the fact of the very last line which says that our entry fees have been paid. And those entry fees, of course, are the entry fees to heaven. And those fees were paid by Jesus by his own blood. And that blood was the only thing that could pay those fees as none of us can do it by ourselves. Ephesians 1, 7, <clears throat> Jesus is talking. He says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Being redeemed means the price has been paid. That is a price that none of us can pay for ourselves. Only Jesus can pay it, and only with his own blood. We only need to trust in him. When I was thinking about Gary, a couple of songs came to mind. The first was Back in the Saddle Again. Those of us who remember that old song, remember that Gary's happiest times were when he was in the saddle. And if he can be in the saddle again, that would be heaven for Gary. Another song was, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. <laughs> and when you, uh, when you think of those words and you hear it, and you, you think about the things that the song talks about and, and what a cowboy's life is like, it really did describe Gary's life very, very well. Another, another song that I heard a week or so ago says, greatly blessed, highly honored, imperfect, forgiven child of God. Gary never had much money or property or material possessions, but he was greatly blessed by living his life in a way that was meaningful to him. He was honored by all who knew him because he was a man of integrity. He would never cheat anyone. You also probably knew that he was imperfect, as we all are. Only in Jesus are we made a forgiven child of God. And that is the only hope that we have. When my dad passed away a few years ago, one of the neighbors said to me, you know, nothing ever went hungry on that farm. And the more that I thought about that statement and how true it was, the more I thought about the fact that what better compliment could a farmer receive than to know that people felt that he took good care of his animals. Gary would, would 
gregarious job of feeding animals, you'll be happy. My name is Donna Harvey. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get through this, but we go way back, our family. My aunt Evelyn brought the first horse to be trained by Gary after he worked with Alvin Gabbard. And it just led to a whole string of horses from there forward from our family. And a lot of people in the horse business don't have the greatest reputation because they're kind of just always want to seek to make money on, on, on a horse. Gary was the most honest horse person that we've ever, you know, had the privilege of working with. You might have brought a horse to him in the spring of the year to get 30 days and have winter hair then. and. You might have picked it up that fall and it had a new coat of winter hair, but he never charged board. He only charged for the 30 days that he rode the horse. And you know he wasn't, it wasn't a money-making proposition for him at all at that time, but it was his life, it was what he loved. I have so many stories, I'll try and keep them short so other people can share, but one story, we were at a horse show and he had a couple of horses, and that was back in the day when there was no fancy barns or fancy arenas or anything. You tied your horses to the trailer that you brought them in. And he had one that was kind of naughty, and he would paw. And then he brought a young horse with at that time who didn't have any habits until that day. And he came around the corner, around the trailer and he's and that one horse was way down he looked like a Shetland pony he pawed so deep into the ground and it was hard hard packed saw and then he and then the other one was doing starting to do the same thing and he said all he could say was now look what you got him doing that was as much of a scolding as Gary would ever do you never heard him swear if he said darn or shucks that was about it, and you knew he was a little frustrated, but never raised his voice. Our daughter Wendy worked several summers for Gary. She loved Gary and Sally. She stayed, she'd come home on the weekends. Um, when Gary knew that he wasn't able to care for his last three brood mares, he asked if we could take them and give them forever homes. We still have one of the broodmares, her name is April. She was a Tiffany's last colt. She was an orphan. And she's producing dynamic colts for us year after year. And then we also have a daughter of his buttermilk buckskin mare that he called buttermilk, that he dearly loved. And she's five, year old, five years old now, and she is probably far and away the best horse that we've ever raised, and we've been doing it a lot of years. She's perfect confirmation. She's a buckskin, and she's just the most smooth horse to ride, and my granddaughter hopefully is going to have a show career with her. But my 90-year-old um, mom, knew I was coming today. She's in assisted living right now. And she said, you go and you say a few words if you can. Because Gary was one of the good ones. And one other story that I had, you know, David was mentioning how he cared for his animals and we were at a show in Watford City, and it was also kind of a trail ride. 
And my stepdad always just worried about if he was going to miss a meal. And he happened to end up riding with Gary. And Gary was hauling horses. And he said, well, we're going by all the restaurants. Aren't we going to stop and eat? And Gary said, oh, no. He said, these horses are getting cared for and put away first. So, but as I was kind of thinking of all the memories, I can, like I, said, I can go on all day, but I want other people to be able to share, too, what he meant to our family. One of those items there, I'm sure, if they can talk, <laughs> could share all the things that those boots have seen and the guy under that hat. Any others before we go on? He touched many lives. As we fellowship at lunch and in the coming days, May these stories bring you comfort and smiles. Remember those good moments, those moments of his smile. Continue to share with each other and let Gary's legacy of love and friendship and wisdom of the world of horses continue to comfort and guide you. God has blessed us by sharing this wonderful man with us. Give thanks for the time that you had together. Rest in peace, Gary. Until you all meet again, your memory lives in each one that is here. Amen. I now invite Ken to come forward and share a selection with us.
please join me as I pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our own need, and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, your mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep us, or keep true in us, the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you, and to you with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave us Gary, gave Gary to us, now we give him back to you. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Gary. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Gary into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, even to this day. For the gift of joy in the days of health and strength, for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends, for our baptism and place in your church, with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. And as he taught us, so now we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. I ask you to rise if you are able and then just turn in our hymnals to number 77 as we sing How Great Thou Art.
Stay and have coffee. We'll be right back.